This is the Market Anything Podcast with Tim Burt. Do you enjoy our budget-friendly introduction? I know you've had the thought in your head, should I be podcasting to promote my business? The short answer is yes, and we'll talk about why in just a couple of minutes. In fact, I mean, you're listening to this podcast to help me promote my business. This is a podcast about podcasting. My name's Tim Burt. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, I encourage you to download and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. It's on most major podcast platforms. So this is the first of a three-part podcast series on how to get you to become a podcaster as quickly as possible. Why? There are a lot of reasons, and they're all going to help your business. So in this podcast, the first of three, we'll talk about how easy and fast you can record your podcast. We're going to talk about the equipment that you need, and the good news is you probably already have it, and it's quite simple to use. In the second part, we're going to discuss the technical side, which isn't as daunting as you might think. We'll talk about recording the podcast, getting your mic levels correct, sneaky podcast host tips, the show structure, and the biggest question, how long should your podcast be? You're also going to tap into my 25 years of radio background and editing audio. I'm going to share some tips on how you can make your podcast sound top-notch. In the third and final podcast about podcasting, we'll talk about how to get your podcast online, uploading and distributing your podcast. We'll talk about the many podcasting platforms, how to get it uploaded, and then blast it out so the world can hear just how awesome you really are. Now, the second and third parts of the series will be released in the coming days. Let's talk about podcasting. Why should you do it? Not just because it's the hot fad right now. Here's a reason why. It's because you can go in-depth on a certain topic about your product or your service. You're able to give greater detail than you can in a long description box on YouTube. Or if someone can't watch your video talking about whatever it is you do right now, they can at least listen to a podcast. Here's another reason. If you have competition, they may not have a podcast. That gives you an incredible opening that they don't have because you're able to explain why you're better and showcase your knowledge and skills. And if you don't have competition, then guess what? You launch a podcast, you're first in the category. Therefore, you theoretically are a winner. Now, before you start freaking out thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to buy a bunch of equipment and I've got to round up guests and I I don't know where to record and all of these things. We're going to address that in just a minute. As someone who spent 25 years in the radio industry, I will tell you firsthand, there are a lot of similarities between being on the radio and doing a podcast. And if you're saying to yourself, but Tim, I have no radio or television background. What do I do? I, I don't even know what to say. We're going to address that in just a moment. First, let's bust some myths about what the world of podcasting really does entail. You might be thinking, with the popularity of podcasts, you might be thinking, I have to do a video podcast. I've got to be on video. You might be thinking, I have to have super fancy equipment and it's going to cost me a bunch of money. And the third thing you might be thinking is, well, I don't have to have a super fancy studio. I can record my podcast anywhere. Well, that's kind of true. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So let's talk about myth number one. I have to have a video podcast. No, you don't. Think about when Steve Jobs first uttered the word on stage, podcasts, when he was talking about the iPod. There was no YouTube. There was no video podcasting. This is a format that was built and designed to be audio only. So if you're not on camera, that's okay. In fact, some of the most successful and best podcasts are audio only. Again, the similarities to radio. If you don't want to be on camera, you don't have to be on camera. Don't worry about investing two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 in a fancy studio and getting everything just right in the lighting and all that. That's not necessary. Again, think about why you listen to the radio. You can't see it. I mean, we paint a picture in your mind, but you can't really watch it. Same thing holds true for podcasts. Let's bust myth number two. I have to have a bunch of super fancy equipment. It's going to cost me a lot of money. Not true. If you are listening to this right now on a laptop or a desktop computer, here's the good news. 
you pretty much have everything that you need right now. And if you want to do video, you've got built-in webcams. That's okay. You might have to download... You might have to download some free software. On a Mac, you have GarageBand, but on PC, they don't really come with any free audio recording software that I know of. So you can download a program called Audacity, and it's spelled just like it sounds, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. It's free, and it will allow you to record and edit your voice and uh, turn it into a podcast. It's very, very simple. Now, I will say that you really should have a decent quality USB microphone at the very least. Those ear pods and headphones with the microphones, they're okay, but I really strongly suggest getting a USB microphone. The Snowball, the Blue Yeti, very, very popular. You can have the best content or interview in the world, but if it sounds like garbage, people are not going to subscribe to you because it's kind of low quality. And to that point, myth number three... I can record my podcast anywhere. I don't need a big fancy studio. Well, that is true. In fact, I've heard some podcasts that were very, very good that were actually recorded outside with very high-end equipment. However, you really should do your best to record your podcast in a quiet room. In fact, here's a pro recording tip that's not going to cost you a penny. If you plan on recording in a room that sounds like there's no furniture in it, like you're walking through an empty house and you get all that room reverb, here's what you can do. Hang some very thick blankets, for instance, uh, moving blankets on the walls, or you get a frame and you can hang it up there. If you don't have those, another sneaky tip is to record in a large closet, or you can hang some clothes up near you to make the room quieter. And especially if it's a closet where there's clothes to dampen the sound, That works incredibly well. So your basic rule of thumb to sum it up, the smaller the room, the better. Now you have some homework to do. Go get your room set up and get your equipment set up. It really shouldn't take you too long to do that. The second part of this series where we'll talk about actually recording your podcast is coming to you in just a few days. Again, I encourage you to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this podcast. Download it as well. My name is Tim Burch. I want to thank you for listening. And you can stay in touch with me at marketanything.co.